Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about the working principle of a screw gauge, which is quite an important topic when it comes to J.A. Silvers. The chances that you get a question from screw gauge is very high, so let's discuss this. But before we start, you make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. There is a lot of interesting videos and important videos that are coming up just like this. Now the working principle of a screw gauge clearly depends on a screw. So if you have a screw right there with you, get one and get prepared. Let's have a close up with it. So here you go guys. Uh, what you're seeing right now is basically a screw gauge. Yeah, this is a screw gauge. I'm just kidding. This, this is a screw gauge. Okay. But uh, to understand this, we have to go with this. We'll ha have to understand what a screw has to do with the measurement. Okay. So what you're seeing right now is basically a screw and a bolt, whatever you call this as. Uh, you can see these threads, right? The distance between two successive threads, that value is called as pitch. The value in between two successive threads that you see right here is called as pitch. It has a quite uh, significant uh, idea to this thing because uh, whenever you run this bolt, I'm just going to call this as bolt, okay? Whenever you run this bolt a full round, whenever you run this bolt a full round, it is going to move by a distance exactly what's the value of pitch okay let us say the pitch value the, the distance between two threads is actually 1 mm which means the pitch of the screw gauge of screw is 1 mm when i turn it one full round when i turn it one full round it moves by a distance one millimeter in this direction when i turn it by one full round it moves by a distance one millimeter when i turn it by half a round not a full round but only half a round when i turn it only half a round it only goes by a distance one half of a millimeter when I turn it one fourth of a round only one fourth it obviously goes by one fourth of a millimeter if it is let us just say one tenth only you turn it by one tenth of a round it moves by one tenth of a millimeter but if only you move it by one hundredth of a turn but here's the problem how do you know how do you know whether the turn is actually one hundredth of a millimeter so that's exactly what a screw gauge means do you see these readings you see these readings up here okay these readings right here are actually marked from 0 to 10 20 30 40 50 60 and all the way to 90 99 and 100 is actually basically against 0 so you need to understand this point whenever a screw gauge turns a one full round whenever a screw gauge turns one full round it goes by a distance which is exactly equals to pitch in most of the situations, the pitch value is basically one millimeter in most of the situations. But for the calculation purpose, for the purpose of a problem, they might give you the value of some other thing. Okay. But for now, you can just uh, remember the value of pitch as one millimeter. It's totally fine. So what's the idea? Whenever I'm moving it one full round, let's start with this value. I'm not sure if you can see this. I'm, I'm going to start at zero. Like the zero is when when it matches the horizontal line. We'll, we'll come come back to the scale later. We'll talk about the scale later. But look at this. I started at zero. I go around. I go around and I'm coming back to zero again, which means I exactly moved by a distance. I mean a full round, which means I moved by a distance one millimeter. Now you can clearly see it's written as a one hundredth of a millimeter since it is uh, marked as 100 readings there are 100 markings on the round scale that's what they call it as they call it as round scale since it is marked as round 100 markings on that you have one hundredth of a millimeter as a uh, least count they call this value as a least count and there is a 15 multiplier which means on the main scale this is what we call it as a main scale on the main scale it has 15 millimeters and in each millimeter, we can again measure one hundredth of a millimeter. So that is what that is the capability of this screw gauge. That's what it is written there. Okay. Now let us start with a discussion. Like how exactly do you make a measurement? If you clearly observe when I'm rotating this, when I'm turning this, there is a jaw or a stand or whatever you call this as a head. You can call this as. It moves along with this. So you clearly need to understand this and this are both basically connected. Okay, and rest of the body is all single body and this whole thing is actually connected to each other. Okay, now what do we do is like we simply put any body, we can put any body in between them. Yeah, okay, don't put your finger or don't put anything. What we need is basically a, a rigid body. Okay, 
don't you don't want to hurt yourself putting anything in between okay so what we need is a rigid body you put it in between what it tells is like when you let's start with this thing let's join these heads completely when you join these heads completely what it happens is the main scale almost comes to zero the main scale almost comes to zero and this value right here on this uh, round scale must also show it as zero but here it shows as something else i will talk about that in the errors part which comes later but if only it is zero which means the distance in between the jaws is completely zero and when i open it when i open it it simply talks about the distance in between these two jaws or these two heads when you are running it it sim we are simply talking about the distance in between these two heads what we need to do is we simply put a body we look at how much of main scale the main scale uh, is rated with basically millimeters okay so you can if you can uh, clearly look the, look at them they are basically millimeters 0 millimeters 5 millimeters 10 millimeters and you can clearly see 15 millimeters also so you run already some millimeters uh let me just take any random value okay let me just take any random value i'm just taking some random specific value the distance between these two jaws at this point must be i'm not sure if you can clearly look yeah it is visible we've already moved up to 0 5 5 is also crossed i can also see the sixth value i'm not sure if you can see it which means the distance in between them is 6 mm and in, to be honest it's more than 6 mm it's not exactly 6 mm because we crossed 6 also we have, we have, we have gone past the point of 6 also so we are talking about a point which is beyond 6 so 6 mm plus whatever the amount of readings if if only it was at like this if only it was like this 6 and 0 it's exactly 6 mm but we didn't stop at 6 and 0 we crossed 6 and gone up to some point let us just say i'm gone up to 72 i'm not sure you can see it but i can even like the little markings are visible here 70 to 80 in between there is a reading 2 so i'm just saying it is 72 so what i can say is from the main scale reading it's already 6 mm from the main scale reading it's already 6 mm beyond that it is already crossed 72 parts of the small scale do you remember one part is 100th of a millimeter so 72 parts is 72 by 100 millimeters so 0.72 millimeters i'm not sure if you getting the calculation right i'm i'm going to repeat this thing one part of, on the scale is 100th of a millimeter so 72 parts is nothing but 72 into 1 by 100 uh, millimeters so what we have is the main scale is already showing 6 millimeters and we have 0.72 mm so 6.72 mm is the reading 6.72 mm is the reading that's what we are looking at right now. okay why don't we actually take a body and measure it uh, what's the best body that why don't we just find the value width of this screw wow we are using a screw to measure another screw it's like screw section wow so i'm going to put this screw in between the heads what we are trying to do is the measure the width, width of this screw okay with this this head what we call it as a head of this uh, screw that here okay if you can clearly see not sure uh, yeah the main scale reading is already 10 11 it crossed 11 so it already crossed 11 now after crossing 11 it already went around and it almost went up to a point of 85 86 86 so what we can clearly see is the reading of this value is basically 11.86 mm what we can do is basically the value of this thing is 11.86 mm it's as, as simple as this okay so the working of screw gauge is quite a simple idea it's not really that difficult but working of a vernier calipers is a much difficult idea i'll try to take another day to explain the vernier calipers it can't be done in a single video Now let's talk about errors. You might already know what the kind of error that you might face when it comes to a screw gauge problem. It's basically a zero error. You all know what a zero error is, but let me talk about it anyway. Okay, a zero error is when you have a device which is taking a reading. When the reading is supposed to be zero, when the device has no reading, must it must show zero, but it's not showing zero. It's uh, showing something around minus two. Let's just say when it must be zero, it is showing minus two. It's a negative zero error. 
which means every time it has to show a reading 10 it will only show 8 if it has to show 17 it will only show 15 and when it comes to a positive error when it must show 0 it wouldn't show 0 it actually shows something around 3 let's just say so instead of uh, showing a reading 20 it will show 23 it will show, instead of showing 25 it will show 28 so that is a kind of error that we call it as a positive zero error so whenever you have a positive zero error from the final reading you subtract the value so that you get the right measurement and whenever you have a negative zero error from the final value to the final value you simply add the value to get the right measurement let's just consider a case where you are making the heads completely join each other but it's not completely going out it's as if uh, some uh, some something is added on to this head so it's not completely closing off so i'm just saying at the point of zero it's not actually showing it as zero but let's just say it is already showing some 20 20 let's just say 20 or 21 let's just consider 21 so even though when it is supposed to show it is zero even though when it is supposed to show it is zero it is the main scale is showing zero only but the round scale is already showing 0 0.21 millimeters you're getting the point right the round scale is already showing 0 0.21 millimeters so whenever i go to measure any body whenever i put any body in between them and try to measure the value it already shows let us just say the original reading is 5.63 millimeters the original reading is 5.63 millimeters but instead of showing 5.63 millimeters it will show 5.63 plus that 0 0.21 which makes it as a 5.84 millimeters so the reading that you will see here is 5.84 millimeters okay so that will be the apparent reading that is here so every time you have a positive error like this like whenever you see whenever you see join the heads and you already see some value as a 21 here which means it's showing extra so in the final reading you have to subtract the value to get the final value you're getting my point there are some situations where you tight it where you completely tight it and it, it will in fact sh go past zero you're getting my point it will not stop at zero it will in fact go past zero and now it shows as something like 85 let's just say I'm going past 0 and it is showing as 85 which means I'm not stopping at 0 I'm going past 0 and I'm written like from 0 to 9 1 2 3 4 up to 90 and then 5 more 15 so I'm actually crossing 15 more points beyond 0 which means I have a minus 0 0.15 a negative error here what we have is a negative 0 error beyond zero we are getting actually a value of minus 0 0.15 so whenever i get this value all my readings actually show less the apparent readings will according to the original value let's just say this time is 8.35 but when i measure it with this screw gauge it will only show it instead of 8.35 because of the minus 0 0.15 it will only show 8.20 you're getting my point so the apparent readings like whenever you have errors whenever you have error positive error they will be mentioned or they mention the, like they give a screw gauge you can directly me uh, measure the zero error or whenever they give you a value whenever they give you a value and ask you to measure it you make sure if there is already a positive error the final reading must be subtracted when you get the final reading you have to subtract it but uh, if you have a negative error when you get the final reading you have to add the value to get the right value so that's it guys i hope i help you understanding the idea of screw gauge for your practice i'm just gonna leave this question on the screen so that uh, you get uh, some practice out of it uh, why don't you try, try to find the answer and uh, pose the answer in the comment section take a screenshot if you want Now if you have more questions regarding this, drop a comment in the comment section or you can reach us on the Instagram page. Now, the working principle of linear calipers is much more complicated to be honest. So I'll discuss that in another video. See you in the next video. Thanks so much and bye-bye. Uh,